So, Doug Dark asked some really important questions to the console gamers. Those who say that the PlayStation 5 Pro is going to give them what they think is a PC-like experience. Now, I've said before, if you want to buy a PlayStation 5 Pro and you feel like the improvements are going to be beneficial to you, there's nothing wrong with that. I just strongly believe that a lot of the, you know, I would say reasons many people have probably said they won't go to a PC are not really reasons that are so excluded from the consoles themselves, especially now that the demand for these consoles to move closer and closer to PC continues to be much more strenuous on them because they've marketed and positioned themselves to be able to provide you, the console player, with that PC-like experience. To that, Doc asked a few questions. Now, these questions are very basic questions, but it just shows that today's console is actually representing itself more as a PC than anything else, which is a very dangerous precedent. Why? PC advancements are moving way too fast for consoles to keep up because the manufacturers of the different components have an incentive to compete on that micro level compared to, say, the PC hardware. So the PC hardware basically just sits there. Let me give you an example. Think about the handheld market. Since the handhelds kicked off with Steam in this generation, how many iterations have we had? We've had a good number of them. I mean, Asus has gone nuts. They've made like three different versions. Steam has made multiple versions. In fact, there was a question if they were going to make a Steam Deck 2. Then MSI came in and made the Claw. Then Lenovo came in and made the Legion. And this particular you know, framework is going to continue over and over. And whoever wants to delve into the, you know, this particular area, you're going to see competition. You're going to see improvements. And so this particular paradigm shows that the more there are players in the industry in this cat or different, you know, skews that they make, the faster they'll, they'll be iterating. But in place of Nintendo, PlayStation and Xbox, there are just three of them. So they don't really have an incentive to iterate as much as the others. Instead, their incentive is to actually keep their ecosystem as locked down as they possibly can. But the market pressure is pulling them out of their comfort zone, and we continue to see this more and more. To this, an audience member responded to that video. They said, according to, you know, what I think a lot of folk, you know, believe, they said, I'm trying to understand why PC gamers don't understand why console gamers are purchasing the most powerful console, which is the PS5 Pro, and because a new option to change fidelity, performance, and FPS counter now where all of a sudden PC wannabes. Well, here's the thing. You are now in the realm of what you've pretty much complained about PC. That's why we're pointing it out. We're saying, hey, for the most part, many console players say they don't want to play on PC because they don't want to deal with settings. I have receipts to this effect because I have multiple videos talking about this particular issue. If you want to go ahead and see it on the Video Game Fight School channel, you'll see it. And this was born out of people asking questions saying, hey, man, what would it take to actually build a PC that is of so-and-so price point? Because the price point argument, that was obliterated with the AMD generation and the GPUs and CPUs that have basically filled up the market. There is cheap hardware all over the place because it used to be you have to spend $2,000 to build a PC that will compete with the PS5. All of this talk because everybody was looking at, you know, pandemic prices, which pretty much kind of ruined the perception of the PC components. That's the saving grace that Xbox and PlayStation had with the new generation. If it wasn't for those incidences, I can tell you for sure they would have seen a huge chunk of their market share eaten away from them. But because those prices came into effect, people had the wrong, you know, preconception. But now the prices are pretty much stabilized back to what we think is even still slightly expensive, but is still capable of beating the consoles. People have said settings is the issue for them. They don't want to tinker, which it continues to lend and, or I guess it continues to beg the question, when you say tinker, you're now tinkering with this new hardware that you've actually gone to buy. So you've broken your, you know, reservations to want or feel the need to tinker with your hardware, that you're now going to go buy a new hardware piece that gives you more, in quote, tinkering options. This is what PC players are just pointing out. This is what Doug Dark specifically was pointing out in his video. 
I don't think even many PC players know how the interface of the PS5 even works. It wasn't until some till Doc said this or somebody in my uh, comment section said something about God of War Ragnarok. I went and watched the YouTuber's reaction and he did like a comparison of like three different modes. I was like, wow, there have to be more than three modes here. Somebody even told me that there are more than four different settings in terms of the modes that you can select. So the tinkering, you know, reservation, I think, is blown out of the water. Uh, you know, at the end of the day. Um, so shout out to you for your comment, but we're going to keep reading. They said console gamers don't want to remove and install hardware components and deal with waiting for games one and a half years later. I'm going to break this down into two pieces. Number one, you said console gamers don't want to remove and install hardware components. Well, that's interesting because the PlayStation 5 has increased the number of hardware components that you actually have to change if you wanted to upgrade your PlayStation 5. Let me give you an example. The PS5, base PS5, gave you the option to be able to increase your memory by adding an extra NVMe slot that you'd have to open your PlayStation 5 to install. Interesting. With the PlayStation 5 Pro, you now have the option to not only install that particular NVMe, but also to install and you know your you know disk drive, which is now two different hardware pieces that you now have to basically go in and actually install to upgrade this console of yours. Again, you have to be thinking very carefully about what it is that you're saying, because now what we're saying is PlayStation is removing all of the roadblocks and many PlayStation fans are just subtly eating it, not realizing that they're backing themselves into a corner the moment they pay for the PlayStation 5 Plus, uh, Pro, sorry, because you know what's going on, right? You actually go out there and put away your simpler to use PlayStation 5 in order to get a slightly more layered to use or slightly complex PS5 Pro from a software in terms of selecting different options if the game actually has the PS5, you know, enhanced patch. And then from the hardware side, being able to, you know, switch, take that, you know, your NVMe and put it into your new, you know, PlayStation 5 Pro that you just bought and then get a disk drive to put on there. And you're happy. Some people are like, oh, I didn't have to do anything because all my games just played. We've been doing that from Steam. You could just get your hard drive that you had your Steam games on and you can go plug it into another computer and then Steam would just recognize the games are installed. Ubisoft even does that. You can find game files. This is stuff that's been on PC for decades. And now when we say this, I mean, and I know when Doc uses the term PC player wannabe, it's just a simplified way of saying, hey, you are in it now. And so those particular things, they're no longer reservations. Now, this talk about dealing with waiting for games one to five years later is no longer exclusive to the PC platform. Why do I say this? Well, we have a very solid example. Example number one, Death Stranding just came five years later to the Xbox platform. So Xbox players had to maybe in a sense maybe wait maybe get a pc in order for them to be able to partake of this game that's one that just showed up the next one that we know that playstation gamers are going to be waiting for even though they're going to be waiting for a few months is indiana jones and the great circle they'll wait till february before they get their hands on that game they're still waiting for another game that they basically castigated and said it was boring Maybe that game might come. Maybe that game might not come. Starfield. So everyone is waiting for games. So the talk from the PlayStation and the console community about PC players waiting for games, <laughs> you've now found yourself in the exact same place where you may have to wait for games or go buy the opposing console if you're interested in playing those games on there. And this is as a result of exclusivity. In terms of first party, I think it's fair game. In terms of third party, I think it's nonsense because third party developers have no business doing that. That's a different video that I've made 50 different times. They said then, the convenience of console gaming and it being the most prioritized hardware for video games, that's actually a, a myth. You know that, right? Like, see, this is, so again, nothing against you, but I think it's a myth. I think you've been emboldened by people who've said this stuff and just walked away without anybody challenging them because games are developed on PC. What you're looking at is basically from the third party side, that's pretty much in most cases not serve the PC community is maybe they don't have a player base that will play it. Possibly maybe they, it's convenient for them to not bother with a PC audience or their game has been money hatted because any serious player 
in this particular conversation needs the PC platform. Even right now, we've been laughing at Take Two and how much this console generation has not sold enough to support the big bucks that they'll be waiting for. That many of us are starting to actually theorize that GTA 6 may show up on PC way earlier than they actually want the game to be. Because you're going to see this 90 million console number, many people are going to buy GTA 6, but it's not going to be as fast as they want it because now the gap is closing. It's not like back in the day when they brought out GTA 5. Dude, when they, in 2013, there were barely any games made. Now, as we speak, there are 16,000 games that have already been launched on Steam. Can you believe it? 16,000 games have already been launched on Steam as we speak. That is insane. So somewhere, somehow, if the PC player has no access to GTA 6, some will double dip, but many would have enough games in their backlog to play while they wait. Just like you have many in your backlog to play while you wait as well. So that's not unique to the console. But we're also aware, and so they said this, don't get it twisted. Console gamers are aware of what PC brings to the table. I honestly don't think that they are. Uh, I think some, con I think many console gamers overall are aware, but I think for the most part, there are a lot of console players that don't know. We've had to wade through a lot of things that have been opinions like, oh, you need to spend $2,000. You need to spend, you know, $1,500 to build a PC. That's going to be like the PS5 Pro. Then we did it with $650. Some people did it with $700. Some did it with $800. All kinds of videos came out. And then that particular, that showed already that many console gamers have no idea how this stuff works. And it's not say it's not saying it in a in a bad way, but saying it because the conversation, especially from the influencers on console, has clouded a lot of the reason that's been here. That's what been what's been going on. They've been trying to bring we've been trying to bring reason to the table, but you can't get through because a lot of folk are closed minded, are closed out because they've been told something else. They said, but we're also aware of the cost, the time, the problems, and the tinkering you have to do just a game on PC. It is this tinkering that we're saying that you're now part of. Technology is now is rapidly progressing, and console gaming is no exception. At the end of the day, console gaming is first priority when it comes to the games, period. No, that's not the case. You're, you see, that's the beauty of this conversation, and I had a reply, which is basically a short form of the video I just made, and this is exactly what we're talking about right now. Anybody who does not leverage a PC platform is at risk of losing their game and losing their studio. This, even if you if see, if you go do even something as little as an exclusive on Epic Games, you might still be at a loss. Ask Alan Wake Part Two. Alan Wake Part, Alan Wake Part, Part Two has still yet to make its profit on its game. What did it do? It was a multi-platform launch, but it did not get a, a Steam release initially. So what happened? Most gamers ignored it. Yeah. So anybody who you may think is prioritizing console games, they're doing it because they do seemingly have that pipeline set down. Plus, it's one skew of hardware. Yes, I can see where you can think that. But from a marketability perspective, third-party developers, including PlayStation themselves and Xbox, are learning. And I think they're going to basically get to the point where you're going to see the changes. And I think the conversation has changed. It's very interesting, isn't it? Thanks for watching the video. Talk to me in the comment section. I think now the console gamer can't run anywhere when it comes to a lot of the excuses that we've heard. Oh, tinkering. Oh, settings. Oh, plugging and unplugging hardware components to upgrade your device. Well, PlayStation is training you very well. In fact, you, don't even, you didn't even know it. If I didn't point it out, many of you would not have even noticed it. <laughs> Take care. Peace out.